Okay, now that you've logged into your Flipgrid account and created a grid, it's time to start with creating your first topic. When you enter your grid, you're going to see a default topic that's there as just a way to help you get started. And it's called the Say Hello on Flipgrid topic. This is a good way to get your students used to Flipgrid, to get you used to it. So if you would like to use this, you can click on that topic and when you go in, you will see that it gives you a little giphy. Um, it gives you the title of the topic, and then it provides the students with some instructions. So it basically says tap the green button below and start recording a short video, say hello, and share a fun fact about yourself. So you can use this just as it is, or if you click on the pencil, you can edit this if you would like to change some instructions. When you are ready to create your first original topic, you can click on the Add New Topic button and it will bring you into a new screen which you'll add all of your settings. So you're going to create the name of the title of your topic. So I'm going to say replacing Mona Lisa. And I'm going to then decide how long I would like the students to be able to record for. You can choose this based on your own preferences from anywhere from 15 seconds up to 10 minutes. And then I'm going to continue on to put in uh, my prompt. So this would be the question that I'm asking the students or what I want them to debate or an idea or discuss a book. So I'm going to go and enter my prompt in there. And for this, I'm going to say, you've been tasked with finding Mona Lisa's replacement. What famous artwork would you choose? So students would need to use their knowledge of art history to defend their choice. Continuing on, you're going to come to an optional area where you can add some different things to engage your students. You can record a video of yourself you can include a YouTube video or a Vimeo video for them to watch before they begin their recording. You can upload images, you can add GIFs or emojis. If I wanna go add a GIFy here, I can search for something that relates to Mona Lisa, being that that's my topic. And I can pick one that I think is relevant scroll all the way to the bottom and click the select button and that's going to put that in there. You can then go down to the bottom and you're going to want to click on the button that says more options so that you can totally customize this the way you want it. A topic tip, this is just going to be something that's going to help your students and maybe you want to say speak slowly and clearly. Moving down to topic attachment, this is not an attachment like you would put in an email, but it more is a link. So it could be a YouTube link. Um, if you had a link to OneNote, you could put in there, but it's not attaching a specific document. Scrolling down to the topic status, this is going to be some important um, settings for you to look at. Video moderation means that you will need to approve your students' videos to be posted until you decide that it's okay. That means that you'll have to go through each student's video and give it a yes or no. If you want video moderation to be turned on, you would toggle that on. If you wanna keep it off, you would toggle that off. The status lets you choose if you would like your topic to be active, meaning that as soon as the students um, have the flip code, it would be opened to them. If you want to hide your topic, you can make it hidden and this will not allow anybody to be able to see your topic. Frozen means that at one point you've made your topic active and your students will be able to see all of the video responses that are there, but they're not going to be able to add anything else to it. Student to student replies is something that you will have the choice to use or not. And it basically means that students can reply using a video response to another student's um, posting. 
And the launch and freeze date, you'll see that it is going to give you the launch date of whatever day you're currently on. Um, and you can go in and customize that. So if you want it to start on a certain day and end on a certain day, you would set that. When you keep going, you're going to see some video features. And again, this some of this is stuff that you may or may want. It's all up to you personally. So video and selfie styles, this lets students add some filters, stickers, drawings. Sometimes it might be relevant and sometimes it might be more of a distraction. So you can go in there and decide which of these options you want. The video title means that your students will be able to actually give a title to their video. So you can toggle this on or off. Video count is the number of times uh, a video is viewed, kind of like on YouTube. This will show you, you know, if a student had five views or 10 views. You can toggle that on or off. Sometimes it might be helpful. Sometimes it might be distracting to students to see um, if their video has not been watched as much as other students. The sticky notes is a nice feature because it's going to let the students be able to add in some notes to themselves to help them while they're speaking in their recording. The editing lets students be able to um, trim up and you know kind of perfect their video. So that's a nice one to toggle on. And this attachment link allows students to include an external link with their video. The feedback is going to be an option that lets you provide feedback to students using a rubric. You do not need to use this feature, but you will be prompted to select one even though you don't actually have to use anything in it. So basically here, if we click on basic feedback, it's going to show you that you're going to have a rubric for um, the use of their ideas and their overall performance in it. If you want to develop a customized rubric, you can do that by adding the criteria and going through um, these prompts here. But this is not something that you need to do. Once you've worked through all of that, you will hit create topic and it's going to say that your topic is ready. You can copy this code and you can share it with your students any way that you normally share links. So if it's your OneNote notebook, if it's your Edmodo page, or if you put it in an email. Now I wanna just make a distinction between a topic URL and a grid URL. Your topic URL, if shared with students, will bring them directly into that topic so that they will not have to search through your grid for the appropriate topic. So this is the most direct way to get them to this specific topic. If you shared your grid link, that would bring your students into the general gr grid and then they would be able to see all of the topics within that. So those are just the ways that you can share out the links. So now you're going to see that this is my topic. These are all of the details. This is the flip code that I can give students that they can use. And if I was ready to share this with them, I would copy the code and paste it where I would like to. Some different actions that I can do here, if I ever wanted to go back and edit the topic, I could do that. Um, and if I wanted to click on the pencil, that would bring me to that same area. If I decided I did not like this topic, I could go ahead and delete it entirely. In the next video, I'm going to show you how your students will be able to respond and what they will see to your topic posting.